Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. So the day has finally come. We now have the refreshers to the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch lineup in the form of the brand new M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. So today what we're gonna be doing is a quick first impressions look at the new M2 Pro and M2 Max's gaming performance. I'll be showing you the first of many different game benchmarks which are gonna be running on the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. And we're also gonna be doing comparisons with the base M2 chip and also comparing against my trusty M1 Max, which was released all the way back in 2021. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So as always, we're going to be starting off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is a great benchmark for all of these Macs. Here we're running the full benchmark at 1080p using the high graphics preset. So in the bottom left hand corner, we start off with the weakest chip in this entire list, which is the MacBook Air with the base M2 chip and 10 GPU cores. Next up in the bottom right is the MacBook Pro 14 inch with the brand new M2 Pro chip which has 19 GPU cores. Then in the top left we have my trusty M1 Max chip which has 32 GPU cores and then on the top right we have the brand new M2 Max chip which has 38 GPU cores. So you might have noticed that I didn't really mention much about the RAM or the number of CPU cores involved. That's because in a game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it's very heavily GPU bound. And so performance is almost linearly correlated to how many GPU cores the Mac has. So for example, if we compare the M2 on the bottom left with the M2 Pro on the bottom right, we can very nearly see a 100% performance increase. And this is due to the GPU count increasing from 10 GPU cores to 19 GPU cores. Similarly, if we compare the M2 Pro in the bottom right to the M2 Max on the top right, we are doubling the number of GPU cores, which is pretty much doubling the frame rate as well. On the top left hand side, you can see that the M1 Max chip from 2021 is actually holding up really well. In terms of performance, it sits in the middle of the M2 Pro and the M2 Max, and this is to be expected due to the number of GPU cores. And this is all despite the fact that it has an older generation CPU, which has two fewer higher efficiency cores when compared to the M2 generation. So there is definitely performance improvements with the M2 chips. However, it really feels like the GPU core count is doing most of the heavy legwork. Let's see if this performance is also reflected in other games too. So next up, we're gonna be looking at the benchmarks for the game Total War Warhammer 3. So Total War games are known for being more CPU bound than they are GPU bound. And you can see that the MacBook Air M2 with only eight CPU cores is really suffering on the bottom left-hand side. This is despite the fact that we're only running a 1080p benchmark on the medium detail setting. And if we compare the M2 Pro on the bottom right with the M2 Max on the top right, they have the same number of CPU cores that is eight high performance cores and four high efficiency cores. So really the main differentiator still is gonna be the number of GPU cores. And what's interesting here is that despite the fact that the M2 Max has more than double the number of GPU cores compared to the M2 Pro, it's only about 80% faster in this particular battle benchmark. So here we're testing out Warhammer 3's campaign benchmark, which arguably gonna be spending more time if you're a campaign player. And here we can see that the M2 Pro on the bottom right can sometimes hit around 45 FPS and in other situations it can hit nearly 60 FPS. However, if you want to guarantee over 60 FPS gameplay, then you're going to have to splash out for the M2 Max chip. And what's surprising here is that the M1 Max chip is also fully capable of running this game at 60 FPS plus. And what this goes to show is that the M2 generation of chips isn't necessarily leaps and bounds better than the M1. For example, the M1 Max definitely holds its own in this lineup. And in terms of gaming, the M2 is merely an incremental upgrade over the 2021 M1 chips. And whilst the base M2 probably isn't the right machine to play this particular game, you might want to consider something more powerful, but you don't necessarily have to jump to an M2 Pro or M2 Max. The original M1 Pro or the M1 Max from 2021 is probably sufficient for the majority of games as well. So anyway, that's my initial impressions of the new M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. Do you think that they're worth upgrading to? Make sure to leave a comment. I'm going to be doing plenty of other game benchmarks in the coming days. If you have any requests, then please let me know. Anyway, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.